So following from the work I've been doing on the interface to this new Hall Effect sensor, I've decided to revisit the gimbal. Um, this design is it's mechanically sound and so forth, but um, the small plastic parts that need to go through the insides of the bearings, um, they're prone to twisting if you put too much torque on them. And I'd really not design something that um, you can't sell as a kit without having to provide shitloads of extra spares to account for breakages during assembly. Um, so I want to make it a bit more robust and a bit more, you know, easy to assemble for people who aren't sort of gearheads. Um, so I started sketching out some new ideas. I wanted to build it around a, a centerpiece with two clamped bearings. Um, so the stick comes down, there's this Y-shaped piece that clamps either side of the bearings. And there's washers in there and so and an and a M8 bolt through the whole, the whole assembly to make it a lot more sturdy. And then the magnet attaches to the bottom. Now those two bearings there are clamped inside this other uh, assembly which um, has two bolts on the ends of it and goes through some more bearings that are in turn clamped at the base. And so I uh, sketched up some bits and bobs and um, iterated on the design a fair bit. So I started out, yeah, that sort of thing. Good thing about 3D printing is you can just keep cranking through the different iterations of your design until you settle on something you're happy with. Um, now I've got the final design over here. Um, I've just bolted it down to a spare bit of wood. Um, I have got this nifty animation going that shows how it works in the X and Y axis. Um, and this is good for checking whether you've got gimbal lock or anything like basic mechanical problems. But it's not, it's no um, replacement for actually building the thing. So I've got that set up there now and it, it works pretty well. Um, the concern I have at this point is the spring mechanism I'm using. I'll wait for it to focus. Um, it uses two centre pegs here and then two outside pegs and as you deflect the axis it bends this wire and it's just a piece of 1.5mm uh, diameter spring steel piano wire and it, it, it works pretty well. Um, but after a while, the spring steel develops a permanent bend and you end up with a bit of slop around the centre like that. Um, so there's a couple of things I could do. Um, I could move the outside pegs further out, but then that increases the, the size of the base and so forth. Um, I could use a smaller diameter spring, but then you get less centering force. But that might be okay, I'm not sure. But as you can see, this design is a lot, it's a lot bigger, but it's a lot more robust and a lot easier to assemble. You can see the bearings are, are clamped in with two bolts that hold them in place. And there's another two bearings down inside the there, you can't quite see them. But the, the motion is very nice, very fluid. Um, yeah, so yeah, just a progress update. So if anyone has any ideas about a better spring mechanism that doesn't use um, proprietary special made springs, I want to be able to make this like very generic, like anyone can whip it together without having to go out and source a very specific type of spring. I'd rather just use a general, you know, easily available piece of wire that does the job well enough. But, you know, that may not be realistic. We'll see how we go. Okay.